Hello everyone, welcome to Rasayan Academy. My name is Jagriti Sharma and I have qualified CSIR uh, net thrice and these are my ranks in the December 18 exam, June 18 exam and December 17 exam. And in the series of UV visible spectroscopy, now I'm adding the previous year's uh, questions. We are going to have a discussion on the previous year questions and this is my first video for that. Okay. And I hope that this video is going to be beneficial for the BSc and MSc students, the stu students who are also preparing for competitive exams like CSI NET exam, Gate Chemistry, TIFR BART and IIT JAM exam as well. Alright, so yeah, let's begin. So yeah, let me also tell you that uh, if you visit the unacademy.com website or if you download the Unacademy Learning app, then you can visit my profile as well, Jagriti Sharma and there are a lot of free courses that I have made and it also has previous year solved questions so I would suggest you to watch them for better preparation and yes there are a lot of recorded live classes as well so you will be able to see what is a live class and you will be able to you know uh, able to see all the recorded live classes by me and many other educators as well and I would suggest you to go and watch because I have added a lot of previous year questions in those special classes or we call it uh, the live class as well. And yes, if you like them, then you can subscribe using my code. It is Jagriti S. And for this, you know, if you are using this code, you are going to get a 10% discount on whichever subscription package that you want. Okay, so let's quickly start with the class for today. So guys, we are going to start uh, solving questions. So the first question that I have taken over here is from the CSI UGC NET exam 2012 December. Okay, so the question is, appropriate reasons for the deviation from the Beer's law okay so the question is asking that what are the appropriate reasons for the deviation from Beer's law so guys we have studied the Lambert's Beer law and we had also studied about the limitation of the Lambert Beer law so I hope that it will be easy for you to answer this question so let's see the options the first option is the monochromaticity of light okay Second option is very high concentration of the analyte, association of analyte or dissociation of analyte. So uh, as we already know that the Lambert Beer law in this combined form is something like this absorbance is equals to log of intensity of the incident light upon the in intensity of the transmitted light which is equals to epsilon multiplied by the concentration and the path length. All right. So basically guys, the, uh, the limitation that we had studied was that because of the very high concentration of analyte, because of the, if the analyte becomes very concentrated, which is greater than 0 0.01 molar, okay, what is going to happen because of the electrostatic attraction, they are not going to be very free to flow and, ref and interact with the light basically. So the, the, you know, the interaction of the particle is very very important with the light and not their interaction themselves so if they are interacting with themselves they are not able to interact with the light properly and that is why very high concentration of the analyte may cause deviation also if there is a change in equilibrium so if there is a uh, you know molecule like this either if it is a dissociating to give c or d or if it is associating to give something like this then also the equilibrium is disturbed okay so we cannot disturb the chemical equilibrium so again the association and dissociation of the analyte are also going to uh, cause a deviation in the lambert beer law so the answer is option number b okay so two three and four all are correct all right so let us also see another question this is from csi ugc exam 2016 june Okay, so the question is asking, in the UV visible absorption spectrum of an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound with increasing solvent polarity, okay, so which one of these is correct for the UV visible absorption spectrum of an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound? So basically guys, if we uh, know that alpha beta in the alpha beta unsaturated compound we are going to have two type of transition the first one is the pi to pi star transition and the other one is the n to pi star transition okay so uh, what is what are the options telling us option number a is saying n to pi star transition undergo hypsochromic shift and pi to pi star undergo bathochromic shift 
by increasing the solvent polarity so there is a different video on how the solvent polarity is affecting the uh, you know the the values so i hope that you have seen it already okay so if this is our system okay and we are adding this uh, if you are adding some non polar uh, you know solvent or if you are adding some polar solvent then what will be the change in the frequency or let's say the wavelength of transition of these both uh, you know uh, transitions is it going to be a hypsochromic shift or a bathochromic shift so guys we had already talked about this that whenever we are having an alpha beta unsaturated system we are if we are talking about the pi to pi star transition then there is a little change in the the excited state is going to be more uh, yeah the excited state is uh, for the pi to pi star transition the sorry the uh, you know the pi ground state is going to be stabilized okay and just a second all right for the pi to pi star transition the pi star is going to be stabilized so it is not going to be like this the pi star is going to come over here guys okay so the pi star is going to come over here and the pi is going to stay at the same place or either i can just write it like this okay so let me just correct it again because what we had discussed in the uh, in the last class was what we had discussed was whenever some uh, state is you know stabilized whenever some state is polar in nature we are we have seen already that whenever some state is polar in nature that polar state is stabilized by the polar solvent okay so the polar state is stabilized by the polar solvent okay so whenever we are having pi to pi star transition in the uh, alpha beta unsaturated system the pi star is going to be stabilized and it is going to come down so that the energy value decreases okay and the energy value decreases and it causes a bathochromic shift all right all right and whenever we are having n to pi star transition for the carbonyl group so definitely guys the carbonyl group itself is polar we don't need to go to the excited state because the ground state itself is polar so the ground state which is our uh, the you know the lone pair the non bonded state is going to be much more uh, stabilized and uh, it is going to be more stabilized as compared to the pi star so that is why this value is going to increase the lamp the n to pi star energy value is going to increase okay so here it is not very you know clear but the the value is going to increase the n is going to come down much more than the pi star okay and that is why it is going to decrease the wavelength and the hypsochromic shift is going to take place all right so the hypsochromic shift is there for the n to pi star transition undergoes hypsochromic shift yes and pi to pi star undergoes bathochromic shift so a is the correct answer okay all right so let us also see more questions like this so this question is asked in csir ugc net exam 2018 june so the question is using a double beam uv visible spectrometer the beer's law fails for potassium dichromate the sol solution when so again we are talking about the lambert beer law and it is failing for potassium dichromate solution when option a is intensity of light source is changed so i don't think the intensity of light source is going to affect uh, is going to fail the lambert beer law it may change the readings but is not going to fail the law okay detector is not a photomultiplier tube no it can be a photocell as well cuvette of 2 cm size is used again if we try to see the uh, you know formula so if we change the path length then it is not going to fail the law it is just going to give a different absorbance value but if the ph is not kept same in all the measurements there might be a change in the uh, chemical e the chemical equilibrium will be disturbed okay so if we are this is our potassium uh, this is our dichromate uh, ion and if we are changing the ph then it can be converted into if, if this is our chromate ion and if we are changing the ph then it is going to be like this so the chromate and dichromate conversion is a very very ph sensitive guys it is a very very ph sensitive change which is taking place and that is why the ph change is 
is मतलब the pH has to be kept constant in these measurements otherwise the readings are going to change and it is going to fail the Lambert Beard law okay all right so yes another question from CSIR UGC net exam December 2017 so the question is asking the band in electronic spectrum of iodine appearing at 520 nanometer will undergo maximum blue shift so again blue shift is hypsochromic shift and the question is asking in which of the following solvents is the iodine undergoing maximum hypsochromic shift which means the, the energy value is going to increase all right so for which of the following system the energy value is going to increase that we can say very easily the solvent which is going to interact with iodine okay so basically it is forming a charge transfer complex with iodine okay the solvents are with the, the polar solvents and the ones which can donate a lone pair are going to form charge transfer complex are going to form charge transfer complex all right so this charge transfer complex is going to have maximum value if the ligand the solvent which is acting as a ligand is going to have the maximum interaction with it okay so water is not going to have a huge interaction with iodine because iodine is not very soluble in water it is soluble in organic compounds right so here we have hexane benzene not them and uh, methanol so guys if we see the structure of methanol it's very very simple to say that the oxygen is going to interact very nicely with iodine and here we don't have lone pair on any atoms right so methanol is very easy to say in this case however i have also added some values for you these are coming directly from a research paper so i have added these values for you for uh, to have for, so that you have better clarity on this if you are taking ccl4 again non polar solvent 515 nanometer is the value okay for iodine uh, this uh, electronic spectrum again if we are uh, have added some polarity this is more polar than ccl4 dichloromethane 506 so the value is going to decrease okay the value is going to decrease as the charge transfer complex in, uh, is becoming more stronger or let's say the interaction is increasing so the lambda value decreases and we are having hypsochromic shift okay so for chloroform it is a little bit like this for uh, again ethanol we have 480 nanometer for methanol it is 455 nanometer so guys we can see that the ethanol is having the best interaction with iodine as we can see in these values okay so we don't have ethanol in the option we have methanol so in all these values we can say very clearly that methanol is going to give the best or let's say the most hyperchromic or blue shift why not water because water is more polar than methanol but water is not iodine is not very soluble in water so we can just eliminate water okay all right so yes guys if you like the video if you are able to understand anything out of it then please like share and subscribe and yes i'm uh, i've already made a lot of videos on the uv visible spectroscopy the theory the concept videos do go and watch them and i'm coming with one more uh, previous year question videos video after this and after that we are going to see a lot of concept clearing and previous year question on the ir spectroscopy as well thank you so much for watching and keep learning